Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the afternoon session. My name is Wu Sun Yang, and I'm, at the, uh, I'm working in the NERSC User Engagement Group. And I'm, I'm going to talk about the debugging on GPU. So maybe I'm severely underestimate, underestimating the number of threads here. So, but I can count only up to 1,000. <laughs> so uh, you know, the problem here is that we are running a lot, lot of threads so that it's very difficult to, to know the, who is doing what. And when the error occurs, where does it occur? So it's very difficult. And in the old days, the very, very good tool of using print statement is not going to work here. Okay, so I, I use the print statement a lot for my thesis, you know, project, <laughs> but uh, it did not work. So you have to use the debugging tools. So uh, this is, uh, these are tools that I'm going to cover today. CUDA GDB is kind of GDB exten extension version for CUDA. And the CUDA memcheck that is reminiscent of uh, Velgrind memcheck. And we have uh, the GUI, uh, pretty good, the GUI parallel uh, debugger called the Total View. We have another uh, popular tool called DDT, but uh, unfortunately we don't have a license for GPU. So for the time being, I, we have to uh, use all th uh, the three of them. So what is a uh, CUDA GDB? This is the extension of a GNU GDB for debugging CUDA codes. You can use this for debugging both CPU and the GPU code within the same application. So, and this is a command line mode, and this is basically for non-MPI, uh, debugging uh, non-MPI code here. But if you want, you can try this kind of trick to use a small number of MPI ranks. And the, uh, the one thing that you, can not uh, you should notice is that uh, when you refer to some CUDA entity, you can just add CUDA, just like a CUDA, CUDA thread 170. You are switching from whatever thread you are on to a thread 170. So it's a different from the, uh, what the, that, that's kind of main difference between the G, uh, GNU GDB. And the very good materials that you can use for learning the uh, CUDA GDB is uh, the, uh, the user's, user's manual provided by uh, NVIDIA. So module load CUDA and then go there, get this PDF file, that's very good. And uh, so what you, what you should do with the GDB, you set the breakpoints. And by the way, the watch points is not, uh, are not supported. Watch point, do you know the difference between watch points and breakpoints? Breakpoints is uh, where the code should stop when you run it. You preset where the code should stop so that you can check the variable values. Watch point is the program will stop, stop when the uh, certain variables value changes. You set the uh, watch points for certain variables. These are pretty useful uh, tool for debugging memory kind of issue. But the uh, CUDA, because probably there are you know, too much resources here, so they don't support watch point uh, here. So anyway, you can set breakpoints and the, you can run the code or continue. And when the code stops, you can just ev uh, check the values of the variables or status of the program. So these are three major main you know, workflow with the debugging. Set the breakpoints, run it, and when the code stops, then just examine. So uh, the another thing is that the, uh, you can run another, so I'm going to, this is the second debugger that, that I'm going to talk about this e after, uh, afternoon, but uh, you can run that second debugger on the CUDA GDB, okay? And uh, another nice thing that I find is auto step, the CUDA GDB. What it does is that because we are dealing with so many threads, right? We can specify a certain suspicious area in the code, like you know, line three, three lines or something like that. So in that particular three lines, the GDB will examine very, very closely all the steps here. So it is single stepping, but the, the rest of the code will run fast, right? So when the code stops there, we can, we can see where the code fails in the warp resolution level. So this is really powerful. I think that this is a very interesting uh, aspect here. 
And the other thing is that you may want to generate the uh, core dump, right? Core dump because you want to examine where your code fails. I think that uh, the foremost important thing with the debugging when you have a, a code bug is that is to know where the code fails. Once you find that out, you solve the half the problem here, right? And then you can do a lot of thing, print statement there. But with a code, you can quickly identify where the code fails, and then you can check the variable values. So this is one way to get the code. So how, how do you run the uh, CUDA GDB? You need to build with the minus G, capital G flag to get the, uh, uh, the debugging information on CPU side as well as the GPU side. If you use a PGI for PGI uh, Fortran, uh, CUDA Fortran, you use it that way. And the start, the, uh, you load the CUDA module and you run the srun command. Uh, please, you know, don't forget to add the uh, dash dash PTY because this is really ne need, uh, necessary to run all the uh, CUDA commands interactively. Okay, the another concept here is the kernel focus. We are, as I said, that we are running, you know, hot, really so many threads here. But I can only examine one thread at a time. So I'm focusing on whatever the, the thread I'm, that I'm on. And if I suspect that the problem is with, with the, on, the, uh, on the other, another thread, I can switch that focus to that thread here, right? So I was examining thread zero, but at the later point, I can change it to thread whatever. So, uh, so what you need to, to do to go to a different thread, you can use either hardware coordinates or software coordinates. Okay, hardware coordinates is like a device. We have uh, eight GPUs on a single node, right? So this is if we are using one device, one GPU, then you have just one device. So on Volta, we have uh, 80 SMs, stream uh, multiprocessors, and uh, we have a warp in the SM, and the lane warp is uh, a group of 32 threads, right? So lane means that which of these 32 threads I'm on, right? One of the, and software coordinates is, I'm sorry, I think that the, I made a mistake here. Software co uh, coordinates the kernel, which kernel I'm running, and the grid, block, and thread. You know, you know that, that this kind of basic entities with a CUDA programming. So to know that the which uh, coordinate I'm on, I can just CUDA device. This is a hardware coordinates here. So I'm on the device zero, SM zero, warp zero, lane zero. CUDA kernel block thread, then it, it'll print the uh, software coordinates corresponding to that one. And if I switch to a different uh, thread, I can say I, I want to go to device zero, but the SM1, warp two, lane three, then boom, I mean to that, the, that particular thread here. So this is, uh, you can go to chapter 11.1. Uh, there are some examples here. It's a pretty good example. The bit reverse is kind of, you know, four byte words, but you change the order in each, in, in, in each byte, right? So it's uh, pretty simple, but you can just follow this step. So module low CUDA, build it, run it, and the, set the breakpoint in the main function, and the set the breakpoint in the kernel. Kernel name is bit reverse here. You can set the breakpoint at line 21, and then run it, and it'll stop at the first breakpoint here. And then you can examine certain things, and then you can continue. And you can, you, 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 sometimes you can forget about the, you know, where you are, which thread you are dealing with. You can say info CUDA threads, and it will tell you that you are on 000, 000. And uh, this is a block size is uh, 255 threads here. So from here, you can get a lot of information about this, uh, this code here. And the backtrace, it shows that backtrace from the GPU side here, because I'm in the kernel. And you can, uh, you can ask about query about the kernel itself, like that. And you can print black ID. You, you, can, you can print a lot of you know, program-related uh, entities, block index, grid dimension. And then if you go to the next line, just type next. 
etc. You can print the array values, check, make sure that the, these are reasonable values. There's something, if you see something's wrong, then you, know, you need to go back from that moment on to see that why you are getting the wrong values. Uh, this is a parameter for the kernel. So you, if you do that, this is a, uh, it will show that the, uh, these uh, parameters, uh, basically pointer as uh, the values here. So you can uh, dereference de it to see the value. And again, you can switch to thread 170 for whatever reason, and they do something, and then you can quit it. So this is a pretty typical. This, this code is not, does not have an error. <laughs> but you can test it that way. Another example is auto step. I, I said that auto step is pretty, pretty useful tool to me, but the example code there <laughs> doesn't seem to work for whatever reason. But anyway, it clearly demonstrates that it is really very, very useful. It will be very, very useful because you don't know where the code error is, but you set the, uh, these ranges of code where the code will run slowly, then you'll find that it'll stop it the code will stop and it will print the where the code failed, lane, work, device, etc. So, okay, and so that you can narrow down. And uh, the second tool that I want to talk about is a CUDA memcheck. This is something similar to the uh, Velgrind memcheck. Uh, just like a Velgrind, it is made of several tools. So the only, probably the same thing is a memcheck. This is to, to detect the any memory issues, memory errors, race check, this can be pretty useful. If you, your code has some race condition between the threads, you can detect it. And the init check, this is pretty minor stuff because this only detects about uninitialized variables. Sync check, it detects some sync error. Again, this, this manner is pretty useful. To build, you follow this step. So the first, first tool in that the uh, CUDA memcheck, this is uh, to, to detect all these things, you know, memory access error, just like a malloc free, double free, invalid pointer to free, heap corruption, et cetera. And besides that, it also detects some strange kind of uh, collections of error, hardware exception, or the CUDA API error checks. But another thing, important thing is uh, memory leaks. Right? You allocate the memory, but you forgot to deallocate when you, before you get out of the kernel, for instance. So if you, do, if you keep doing that, then the, you will be losing a lot of memory for, because of that, right? So you, your program will probably eventually crash because no more memory will be left out. So memory detection. So to, build, uh, to, to run the, this tool, load CUDA module, run this command, CUDA memcheck, and then uh, some uh, memcheck options. For instance, if you want to detect the memory leaks, add this flag here. And as I said, uh, this memcheck tool can be run on the CUDA GDB, inside the GDB, but there's one uh, caveat here. So if you run the uh, memcheck on the CUDA GDB, kernel launch will become synchronous. You know that on the host side, the kernel launch, the, I mean the uh, kernel launch should be non-blocking, right? right? Data transport may be uh, synchronous, but this one, if you do that, if we use this one, then this can be blocking. So, uh, and be aware of that. And uh, there are pretty good examples here. Two examples, you can just follow that step. So, so, so this the part of synchronous is when you use both together, the CUDA GDB and the memcheck? Yes, yeah. If you do a memcheck, if you run the memcheck on the CUDA GDB, the kernel launch will be blocking with respect to the you know, host CPU side here. So race, race check, this, as I said, this is to detect the race condition, but this only currently it supports for shared memory. I mean, shared memory meaning that own chip, fast memory, right? So shared, if you, this, this detects the race condition among the, uh, the variables inside the shared memory. 
Right. And not, not, not anything else. So to run it, you run this command, and it, it reports two types of error. I have three types of reports. One is uh, to report about individual uh, the race condition. And the, the second one is analysis that is uh, based on whatever the, you know, the race, condi race condition it detected, it kind of be summarized about this, this code, about this race condition. Again, try that. And you need to check, this is, as I said, that if you try to use uh, some uh, array or variables without initializing first, it will detect it. But that only, this only works for the variables in the global memory. Global memory only. I'm sorry that I two words. So for instance, this will not work for the shared memory variable or local variable, right? So to run it, you just do it like that. Sync check this uh, the detect the uh, the synchronization synchronization between the threads. Total view. So this is graphical. This is a really uh, truly you know full feature you know graphical parallel debugger. So the manual says that it only supports Cray compiler. So I contact the vendor. They said that it maybe uh, support GCC, Clang, and other stuff but I need some time to check it. And it also supports uh, OpenACC, and they also said that it only supports Cray, according to the documentation, but I think that I tried the uh, GNU or something. Anyway, um, so it definitely supports CUDA, and uh, definitely supports MPI. To, run, to use that tool, you run like that. And uh, this is uh, quite complicated, but it, it contains, uh, contains a lot of information. Callback trace, this is a stack frame. You can see uh, the variables in the stack. Stack frame here. And then you can set a breakpoint here by just clicking on the number. This is kernel. And uh, we are inside the kernel. And uh, this is uh, the total views convention. So they represent the, each of thread or process using these uh, two numbers, one point something. The first one roughly refers to the uh, MPI task, but not necessarily MPI rank. And second number is roughly transport, uh, corresponds to the thread ID, but not exactly. But anyway, by looking at it, if you see a negative number in the, in the second part, that means it's a CUDA kernel, CUDA thread. The positive ones are the, uh, the, uh, the CPU side here. So uh, you can set, you can just click the on the number on the source pane and to set a breakpoint. And uh, before the CUDA code is loaded, then that point that the breakpoint will be set temporarily. But once the CUDA code is loaded, then it will definitely it'll locate the breakpoint in the correct location. And then, as I said, hosted, hosted uh, thread is, has a positive second number. CUDA thread has a negative number. So this is a trivial thing because you know, everything will be done by the, uh, the warp level instruction. Okay, and here, if you look, I'm sorry, let's go back here. We are talking about here. So this is uh, to show the, uh, the thread coordinates here. So block thread, three-dimensional entities, right? And the thread number uh, minus one. So you can click this button to specify the, uh, the coordinates in terms of logical. Logical meaning the uh, software coordinates in, in the CUDA GDB term or physical coordinates here. That, it, that corresponds to hardware coordinates, you know, device, uh, the SM, et cetera. Uh, to check the values, you can just right click on the uh, variable in, the, in whatever in the window. This is called a dive, dive on the variable. And you can check the value, and you can plot the array elements. You can get the statistics about the array elements here. So I think that that's all. I have today, but if you
play around with this. This is kind of intuitive tool, so you can learn very quickly. So if you have, question, if you have a problem and question, just let me know. All right? Yeah, I, I let it. Yeah. Yeah, I let it. Okay.